Hey guys, it is Ebony and today is Sunday, March the 15th, Sunday night and um, I decided I felt like making a video about pretty much nothing, just talking to you guys and um, so that's what I did. I turned on this webcam, well that's what I'm doing right now. I turned on this webcam and I decided to make a video. So it's Sunday night and as you can see, I did not get a chance to braid my hair, which I'm very disappointed about because I really, really wanted to get it braided while I was on vacation. I had I felt like I had ample time, but of course my vacation went by so fast. It was a staycation. I didn't go anywhere or do anything um, besides my normal um, traveling. My normal traveling, which, you know, I normally travel to the local cities. You know, every month I'll go to some of the local cities around me and um, to do various things. Um, but the cities that are like an hour or two hours away will go and do various things. So besides that, it was pretty much a staycation. I didn't do anything that would be considered vacation worthy or whatever. So um, the time flew by. I really, really believe that people need more than one to two weeks of vacation a year. Like each stint, each time you take vacation, I, I would say you would need at least... Um, three to four weeks at a minimum. So I would say three or four weeks once a year would be decent besides your few days here and there that you sprinkle in for holidays and sick days or whatever but just like everybody should be given a standard like four weeks vacation that you can take all at once because people need a break. We're on the go, 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 go so much and it's not doing anything but stressing our bodies out and wearing us down and making us age faster and causing us to be susceptible to sickness and everything else because we're constantly on the go. So I really, really think that people need, you know, longer periods of vacation, which I do believe if I'm not if if I'm not incorrect, but I do believe in Europe that they have extended vacations like that. And even extended lunches and things like that. Like in America they work people to death. Literally to death, you know. <laughs> People will be on their deathbed thinking about when they can get back to work. But um, anyway, I go back to work Monday and I feel good about it. You know, a lot of times I'll go back to work with like dread or some type of anxiety like, oh, I'm back at work. But I feel good about it just because, um, I don't know, I just feel good about it. You know, I, I've been trying to train myself to think about things in a positive light. So going back to work is a positive thing because I am employed and I... And that's a wonderful blessing in itself, you know. I'm able to um, support my family along with my husband. We're able to support our children, and our children don't need for anything. So I think that that's a blessing in itself. So when I think about going to work, I try not to think of, think about it with dread, but I try to think about it like, you know, um, it's a good thing. And I work for a really, really great company, and they treat their employees um, well. And, you know, I have a lot of perks and benefits for working for the company I do. So I'm very blessed in that aspect. But I'm going to go back with positive thinking. I'll probably get up early, early in the morning and go uh, instead of my normal time. I'll probably get up like an hour earlier because whenever I come back from vacation, I have tons and tons of emails loaded up waiting for me, you know, just backed up in my email. And I made it a point not to log in from home the whole week and check anything at work because I'm like, it's going to be there when I get back anyway. Why would I take my vacation to log in and try to check emails and look at things? I'll just worry about that when I get back. So I'll get there like an hour early and try to check everything and get everything squared away. Look at my lip color, you guys. It's this dark purple color. It's smoke purple from MAC. And I was just thinking, you know, with spring being right around the corner, um, spring being, being right around the corner, that I'm not going to have an opportunity to wear any of my dark lip colors because I have not been wearing them over the winter and the fall, the fall and winter. I wore a dark color probably a few days, but not nearly as much as I could have. And I have this beautiful purple color, smoke purple, that I never have worn out. And I decided to throw it on today because it's just pretty and it's about to be spring. And these colors are really not spring and summer friendly although I feel like you can still wear the darker colors at night you know at night you can do more dramatic makeup looks as opposed to the day and they they look really beautiful especially if you go out to dinner you know with your husband or your fiance or your boyfriend or whatever you go out to dinner in the restaurants where they have the dim lighting you know dramatic makeup looks look really pretty in the dim lighting because the lighting is dim as opposed to bright lighting where it just magnifies the amount of makeup you have on your face and you tend to look a little bit more clownish than, um, you know, 
beautiful. So um, I think these dark dark lip colors and dramatic makeup looks will look really pretty at night. But I've been on a nude kick lately, so I've been wearing a lot of nude lip colors and a lot of nude um, looks. I told you guys that. So anyway, it's Sunday night, and I, uh, my husband has gone out to dinner with the kids because we couldn't decide on what to cook. Or, you know, um, I really don't have time because I'm supposed to be doing my assignments that are due at midnight tonight. I've been pushing my assignments to the last minute. Like, I'll submit them. I'm taking online classes for this degree, and I'll submit them within, like, three or four minutes within – uh, the due date or the due the time that is due which is midnight midnight um, Eastern time so it's really 11 p.m. my time which you know cuts into an hour I would have because it's due midnight on Sunday but that's 11 p.m. my time so I've been pushing it to the the last few minutes because I just don't feel like doing it anymore I've lost all my motivation for my education luckily I only have about two classes left that I'm done because I just lost motivation for this, you know. I have so much to do, and and I just can't quit. It's just not in me. I'm not a quitter. It's never been in me to quit. Um, and I and I don't know. I I have a certain thing about people who are quitters. I look at them and I think, okay, if they quit with this or they quit with that, what else in their life would they be so easy to quit? So I have a thing about quitters, and I I don't want to because I have a thing about quitters. I can't quit myself. So otherwise, I would have quit. Like, I would have let it go, but I'm going to see it through the end. Two more classes, and then that's it, you know. I'll probably never take another class again in my life because I don't... Right now, in this time of my life, I have things that are of much more importance than my education. And because my education has no eternal value, <laughs> I just don't see me dedicating a lot more time or energy to it and I'm not saying that education is bad or that you shouldn't do it because if that's what where God is leading you for whatever you know plan he has for your life definitely you know get your education education is beautiful especially educated smart women you know that's really beautiful when you can be educated and you and you can be able to support your husband and make educated help him to make educated decisions and you know and give him a perspective that he can depend on and rely on because you had you're educated. But you know, I don't feel like this. It was God's will for me to um, to start this degree. Um, maybe it might benefit me later, but I don't feel like it was His will. And when I did it, I just did it because I wanted to, and I really didn't pray about it and seek what His will was. So that was my mistake. Um, for the future, anything that I do, I'll pray about it first and fast about it if necessary to to hear what where God is leading me. If He's not leading me to do something, I won't do it because in the end, it ends up with a lot of stress, a lot of heartache, and a lot of unnecessary um, energy that you have to devote to something that God didn't even want you to do anyway. So I think that's an important thing that people should be considering. Yeah, you want to do things that you want to do, and you want your life to be, you know doing what you love to do but then i think god will plant in you you know things he will he will put talent into you so he's going to give you the things that you love to do you know he's going to put that in you but then those things that he put on you i believe he uses those things to to fulfill whatever will it is he has for his for your life so he's going to put the desire in you but that desire is going to be ultimately to fill whatever will he has for your life if you listen to him and if you seek him and 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 find what that will is for your life. So, um, for the longest time, for many, many years, I never even knew that I should be seeking God's will for my life. So I did. So I did what I wanted to do based on what I thought would be beneficial to me. And God blessed some of those things and some of those things he did not. <laughs> some of those things ended in tragedy <laughs> and some of those things he blessed. So, <laughs> and you know, I'm thankful, though. He's led me to a very, very good place in my life. I'm very happy. I'm very blessed. And um, now I know to seek his will, so that makes it even better. But it's, I spent many years just doing what Ebony wanted to do because Ebony thought this would be the best thing for her. And, it, and some of it ended up being okay and some of it didn't. But we live and we learn. We live and we learn. So, yeah, so um, I will... 
yeah, so that's about it. Um, I'll stop chit-chatting and talking because um, since it's not a real conversation, it's basically me just talking to you as opposed to us having, you know, an exchange. Um, yeah, so I will talk to you guys again soon. I hope you have a blessed week and um, catch you later. All right, bye.